You heard you could save big when you bundle home an auto with Progressive, so you went online to check it out. But then you saw a link for a survey about which type of bread you are. And now you're on question 17, barely scratching the surface of your bread identity. You always thought of yourself as a brioche, but are you actually more of a pumpernickel? Ah, yes. They said it was easy to save money bundling with Progressive, but they forgot about the rest of the Internet. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Bundle discount not available in all states or situations. Dear home, we need a change. A little room evolution. We need home sense, where one bold piece can change your whole place. Like a leather sofa built for beauty and binge watching. With endless discoveries, I'll always bring you something pretty or cool or pretty cool. You want a new handwoven rug? Game-changing savings mean the answer is yes. I'm going now because unique is every day. And you never overpay. Love you. Home Sense. This changes everything. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for downloading Sporgy for free on iTunes or from ChristopherMedia.net. Please make sure to rate Sporgy five stars on iTunes and help to tell others about Sporgy by leaving a comment. Thank you for following Sporgy on Twitter at Sporgy Podcast and on Instagram at Sporgy underscore podcast. Please follow Sporgy on Facebook to like and share Sporgy. You can also email the show. The address is Sporgy at ChristopherMedia.net. If you would like to donate to Sporgy, you can click on the PayPal button at ChristopherMedia.net. If you use Amazon.com, please click and bookmark the Amazon link at ChristopherMedia.net. It will not cost you any extra money and you will help to support Sporgy. If you are looking to launch your own website, please click through the HostGator banner at ChristopherMedia.net. Christopher Media uses HostGator to host all of the shows produced by the Christopher Media Network. When you click through the HostGator banner at ChristopherMedia.net and sign up for HostGator, you're helping to support Sporgy. We know that choosing the perfect gift for a man is a difficult task, but not anymore. TheBroBasket.com is here to help. We all know men are hard to shop for, but what do guys actually like? Their favorite alcohol, that's what. It could be craft beer, wine, whiskey, scotch, or tequila. TheBroBasket.com will put it in a gift basket full of their favorite gear and goodies. You can customize your own bro basket or choose from a variety of different bro baskets, like the Ultimate Import Sampler, the Jack and Coke gift set, or the Junior Executive gift basket. Boozeless, but still cool, bro baskets are also available. TheBroBasket.com gives you many shipping options to choose from, including rush delivery and Saturdays. 21 and over, please. State and local laws apply. Beer, wine, and liquor are not available for shipping in all states. You can help to support Christopher Media by clicking through the BroBasket.com banner at ChristopherMedia.net. Men used to be hard to shop for. TheBroBasket.com Christopher Media. Let's make some noise. Welcome to Sporty, the show that gives you half-assed sports fans giving their half-assed opinions. And now, here are your hosts. Oh, number, what is it, 63. 62. 62? Oh, yeah, that's right. Last week was Roger Maris' home runs. So I'm Chris. I'm Rich. I'm the ice man. Oh, so did a tornado get you already? The damn phone. Ah. No, and, just the damn phone again. Hey, you know, it's all right, ice man. It's a lot, a lot of technical difficulties this week. We're recording a day later than we should be. Because our studio has gremlins and it is what it is. Hopefully we'll have it fixed by next week. But uh, who is number 63? You're 62. God damn it. What, what, what lineman? Off the top of my head, I am Wendell. Credits for effort there. I can give you shit for 62. I, yeah. I can't give you anybody. The only reason, the only reason I know Ryan is because he's on the offensive line for the Patriots. Those guys didn't get any credit for their Super Bowl. So there's him. There's uh, number 77, Compton. I got an autograph by him. And he used to be a Detroit Lion. Yeah. Yeah, good for him. He made it out. Won something. Made some of himself. Hi, but what? To keep it right in football. Uh, I guess the the uh, there's been a few big stories in football in the last since we've all last got together. Uh, but we wanted to start it with the bullshit that's going on in Dallas with Ezekiel Elliott getting a six game suspension for something that the law cleared him of. But apparently, I guess Roger Goodell is greater than the law at this point. Well, according to NFL policy, you do not need to be convicted of... Oh, wow. 
We are very sorry for this week's episode. I'm just going to tell you that right now because I'm having technical difficulties now. So that's all three of us. <laughs> uh, all right. So anyways, yeah, apparently the NFL has a policy. You don't even have to get charged. You just, an accusation is enough. So I guess congratulations to, to victims' rights advocates and gold diggers everywhere because now this is all you need to do is make an accusation against the player in the NFL and they'll suspend them. And of course the union's fighting it, but that doesn't do any good because they're just painting the union as victim bl- uh, shaming and the union's the union is doing what the only thing you can do in the 21st century in the year t- 2017, which is cloak themselves in victimhood themselves by saying they're the victims here. The players are the victims. Because how many pissed off people, and I mean this this isn't limited to women. It's just I think I think I think football NFL players have a higher chance of pissing off women with a hump and dump. And and oh yeah baby yeah baby I'm gonna I'm gonna, we're gonna be together. Ugh. And what's your name again? And then all of a sudden yeah, here come go. all the accusations. Yeah, here come the accusations. And I mean you can sit there and go oh, chauvinist, misogynist, woman hater, whatever you want to call it. The fact of the matter is it happens. It's not a fucking remote fucking experience to, to, to athletes. At every rookie symposium, they're warned about it, all right? But, you know, now whether he beat her or not, I don't know. Apparently, the cops don't feel that there's enough evidence. Um, there are multiple witnesses saying that they heard her scream at him more than one time. She's going to ruin his NFL career. Uh... I mean, if that's the case, seems to me like both parties are, they are, what in, in literature circles would be considered unreliable narrators. So two sketchy ass people cancel each other out in my book. So it's a fucking wash, but not in the NFL's book. So. Awesome. Great new society we're living in. Can't wait. I'm so I'm gonna start following Matt Stafford around the Metro Detroit area. Start saying he did shit. And we can all quit our jobs. <laughs> I, I feel this is Roger Goodell just being Roger Goodell. I mean, he went after the Patriots hard as hard could be. I mean, people will say, "Oh, well, I agree, and flake gate, flake gate, yada yada gate." But I mean, he went after them hardcore, and uh, you know the evidence wasn't there. But I mean, obviously, to the naked eye, it was. But uh. Then you take, you know, what he did to just people around the league, what he did to Ray Rice, how he ousted him, and video evidence there. Uh, Adrian Peterson, how he suspended him for disciplining his child. I mean, at this point, the matter of whether Zeke did or didn't do something, I mean, that's for a court to decide, not us. But for the six-game suspension, that's just Goodell being Goodell in my book. I mean, the, 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 oh, God damn it. The one thing I'll make in Goodell's favor is hey, it's private business. They can make their own rules. But I don't, this sets a shitty precedent in my book. You don't even have to do anything anymore. You know, if it's going to get the NFL in the papers for the wrong reason, well, yeah, I mean, that's, you get suspended. Well, that's what I'm saying. It, it, it doesn't matter what you do or didn't do or whatever. It just, that's Goodell being Goodell. You know, I, cause they're, You can agree or disagree with all the domestic violence and shit and everything, but when you discipline your son with the switch and it has nothing to do with football, it's not illegal in any way. Uh, The NFL has no depends around whatsoever. Like, you know, if every day you're like at 3 o'clock, you tell your kid to go get a switch so you can beat him with it just because, yeah, that's... That's, that's where the law kind of steps in. I, do give, I gave what you're saying. Or... Well, to me, it's just this is <clears throat> this is a case of uh, this isn't even his employee doing this. Because if you want to get down to it, uh, technically, he doesn't work for the NFL. He works for the Dallas Cowboys. Okay, Adrian Peterson didn't work for the NFL. He worked for the fucking Minnesota Vikings. This is this is like the federal government coming in and superseding state laws to punish somebody when the state said there's nothing there's there's nothing that to 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 
to prosecute them for and to incarcerate them for. And the feds step in and go, yeah, there is, because we say so. And you just jarred my brain there, Rich. This shit happened before he was even a member of the NFL. This was for what? A domestic violence, quote-unquote, incident that happened in a legend, because of a lot of funny thing wrong. It was, what, February of 2016. He didn't get drafted till April. So why does... So why is this even a question? Why is this even affecting his NFL career? I don't because understand that either. Special, because special interest groups have weaseled their way into something they don't give a single fuck about, which is the which is football, and they're going to use they're going to put every athlete they can's feet to the fire because it serves their narrative that all men are vicious, raping women beating animals and the more testosterone and the more alpha male you are, the more likely you are to beat and rape and oppress and subjugate all females. Bottom line, because the only, the only, the only people I hear making a big deal in support of this are people who have no interest in football online, but are running around going, and this is, this, this is the irony. These are so-called feminists who want equality, and I'm using big air quotes with those words, okay, going, mmm, I love the taste of the white male tears for him getting suspended. What the fuck are you talking about, you loopy cunt? You stupid bitch. First of all, he ain't a white male. What white male tears are you fucking soaking up? He's, he's losing six game checks. He ain't a white male. Yeah, I just that Friday. Where's the SJWs jumping on? Hey, you get black man paying punishment for a crime he didn't commit. Where where are they on this one? Because in the in the hierarchy of victimhood, he's still a man, so he's still low. He's still he's he's lower on the victim scale than a woman is. Uh, is he paying the price for Barack Obama getting elected first? Hillary got elected first. Would the black man still be the most persecuted? I mean, I mean, let's let's be honest here. All these uh, all these feminist videos and shit that I see come out that attack toxic masculinity, so on and so forth. Um, it's always, oh, we followed some woman down the street with a hidden camera for eight hours, and when seventy, eighty percent of the guys hitting on her are black, they never draw any attention to that. But all of a sudden now it's 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 oh hey look at the the, the white male tears white male te- what white male is being punished for this this is a white male punishing a black male for something he did that the law can't even prosecute him for or is it because a bunch of white males are upset is that where the SJWs are going with this it, they take their victories whatever that wherever they can get the, the goal is no longer equality and anyone who argues it is is trying to push an agenda the goal is to aggravate your opponent it's it's like sung Tzu said in the art of war if your opponent is of is of ill temper agitate him and this is what this is these days this is what all these this is what all these protests and anti-protesters and and we're gonna boycott this and we're gonna go after this this is what all this is this is to agitate a situation to get people pissed off so the people who are pissing off people can, can strut around and go, ha, 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 we fucked you over like little children. We have literally de-evolved into 40-year-old children. We are in a tattletale society. We are in a society where the minute something happens that you don't like, that person's rights cease to exist and you can do anything you want to try to tear the person down who has an opinion different from you. From, from exposing every private fucking part of their life through doxing to trying to get them fired to trying to get them thrown out of the, 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 the field of, of, uh, of work that they're in, et cetera, et cetera. And this is all this is, man. This is, this is, it's only going to get worse. It's not going to get better. And I, I at this point, what's going to, you know what's going to happen is people are going to lose so much, someone's going to snap. Someone's going to snap. There's going to be a player who's going to get suspended for an entire season and lose an entire year of his career, an entire paycheck, and he's going to snap, and he's either going to end up in Roger Goodell's 
office, dangling him off the fucking balcony like Suge Knight did fucking Vanilla Ice, or he's going to go after allegedly. whoever made the allegedly, or he's going <laughs> to go after whoever who's going to go after whoever made the allegation. Because I'm going to tell you something: you punish an innocent man long enough, you will hear an innocent man go, "I wish I would have done the crime." Yeah. I've rarely seen a guilty. Guilty man say, I wish I'd really done the crime. Guilty man has every excuse why he was found guilty. I had a shit lawyer. I got railroaded. The judge had it in against me. An innocent man will be the first one to go. Well, if I'm going to jail for 20 years for something, I should have killed the bitch. Eh, you could argue we're kind of seeing that kind of happen politically in this country. But that's another show. But this is, these are people that don't care about sports, who have no interest in sports. They just want to punish the culture as they see it around sports. That's it. That is it. It's jocks versus nerds, man. It's now on a fucking global level. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, uh, if if you're a Cowboys fan, all you can hope for is that he gets it, he gets it reduced to maybe what three games. He did appeal it, I believe, yesterday. Oh, it's an appeal, and Goodell made sure that. He's not going to be involved in the appeal whatsoever. Uh, why? I mean, he, plausible. plausible to, Goodell's trying to he's distance involved enough to hand it himself down. from this. He's trying to. He, Goodell's sitting there pulling all the fucking strings like a puppet master, but he's trying to distance himself from this as much as he can. He's doing his best impersonation of Pilate is what he's doing. Ah. He's going, I'm not going to crucify Jesus. What do you, what do you people want? We'll just... You make the decision. Ain't got nothing. I'm gonna wash my hands of this decision. So if you are a uh, Dallas Cowboy, you are just hoping Derek McFadden it has not gotten rusty. That's what you are hoping for. He's still the backup back there, right? I believe so. They go fancy footballers. Pick up Derek McFadden, handcuff him to Zeke, and have Zeke warm your your DL spot for six weeks. Oh uh, yeah, it, uh, the backup is McFadden. Used to be Joseph Randall, but he couldn't stay out of trouble in Wichita. Yep. Dummy. We talked about that last year. Wasn't that one of those keep my name yeah, out your mouth kind of situations? Respect. You respect me. I respect you right out of the NFL, dipshit. He is such an idiot. Well, I, you know, the, the bigger the bigger issue is I'm not defending I'm not defending Elliot. I don't know what happened between him and his old lady. Two people know. Him and her. All right. All I have to go on is what the police say and the fact that in this country, at least growing up, I was told we're innocent till we're proven guilty. And he's been found guilty, convicted, and sentenced in absentia by a group that only has power because fucking the owners gave Goodell power. And I have to wonder at a certain point how... First of all, you want to fuck with the Patriots? That's one thing. You want to fuck with Uncle Jerry's team? That's another thing. Uncle Jerry will fucking rally owners around him in a heartbeat. So that's another reason I think Goodell is trying to distance himself from this and say, look, this is what the, this is NFL policy. This isn't me. This is why I'm not going to be there during his appeal. Because he knows for all his bluster and all his fucking tough talk, he don't want Uncle Jerry fucking walking around with a wild hair up his ass to Oh, I saw that's, a couple articles that he's pissed. He is not thrilled. Well, let me tell you something. If he keeps fucking around, the best thing that, that can happen for Goodell is for Jerry Jones to drop dead suddenly of a heart attack. Because if he pisses Jerry Jones off to where Jerry Jones makes it his fucking life, the rest of his life's mission to get Goodell out of there, he will be out of there. You can believe that. That man gets his way just through he's sheer willpower. <laughs> Never thought we'd be longing for the good old days of Paul Tagliabue. Well, first of all, you know, I, I, I'm really, it, it's, it's tiresome and it's, it's gotten old and it needs to stop, but it's only going to get worse. And that is this attitude of the minute you fuck up, then you don't, you no longer deserve to make a living. That you can't, that there, you can't have any transgression without, you no longer have a job, your career is over. Go go fucking drop some fries and flip some burgers because that's all that, that's all you're gonna be able to get a job doing. That's horse shit, right? I'm I'm not even apologizing for this. Look up the statistics. Most fucking so-called domestic violence cases, the violence is there on both sides. Both parties are fucking throwing blows at each other. But because we live in a double standard society where women are equal, 
except for when it comes to shit like that, then all of a sudden it's an issue. Well, I can tell you. Then it's men beating women. I can tell you another part of it too, Rich, is probably, it, it probably happened, I don't know, when we were little kids or teenagers, is there has been an, a, and well, in another podcast here, but there has been a shift in the attitude of corporate America. It used to be we care about our workers, and it now has shifted to we care about our profits. Uh, I mean, I could, I sound like I'm defending them here, but I could see where it's cheaper to replace you than to replace the business we lost because of the crazy shit you did. Now, I'm not defending it. I'm just saying that is more than likely the mentality where these people are coming from now. You know, it used to I've be been our workers. Firsthand. Yeah, it used to be our, our workers were our, our life. But we know this is what made us. You know, we stand, and now they care more about the profits than they do the people that made them the profits. And I think that's that's I, led I am, the sports world. I work. am firsthand victim of that. Oh, yeah. you, you, you don't need evidence. You don't need anything. All you do is accuse somebody of something, and whatever their intention was does not matter. Whatever happened does not matter. Did the act happen? Well, yeah. Did you say that? Well, yeah. Okay. They're offended. You're fired. Well, you know what it Wait, is? Dude? What? The magic word is uncomfortable. Whether it's in regular social situations, whether it's in a sexual harassment kind of situation, any kind of work environment, the, 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 the magic word is uncomfortable. That is the word where any HR department hears it. That's it. Whoever made you feel that, they're fucking done. That sucks. Back well, it's what Rich said, a bunch of babies. It's also it's also we've we've entered the time period of if someone makes an accusation, we don't look at the facts. We look at where the people who are being accused and the people doing the accusing fall on the victimhood scale. And if the person doing the accusing is higher on the victimhood scale than the person doing the being the accused, you have to automatically side with the victim. Because if you don't, then you're a Trump supporter, and you, then you're a misogynist. You're every, you're every evil word they can figure to throw at you, no matter what the facts dictate. Because facts no longer we live in We live in a world where if you give scientific, peer-reviewed studies and proof to people, they look at you, they throw your study that you just gave them in the trash, and they say those are hate facts. Hey, it's just popped in my brain box. Just a thought. Did Zeke get OJ'd? Is this because he punched the DJ, but then it got dropped? Is, is this Goodell trying to be like, all right, two things in the last year that the law said, technically, you're good, but, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna suspend you. You're going to in school suspension for a week. Well, see, that's what I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for the, he has a history of, to get thrown out there. And it really hasn't happened Except for the people who are who are honestly cowboy haters, and I have no love for the Cowboys. Fuck the Cowboys. They're not my team. They're not America's team. They're a bunch of fucking. We used to goof on them in the nineties. I'm constantly sending you guys fucking memes of you know you see prisoners lining up and it says you know Cowboys going you know, reporting for 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 preseason camp. You know I have no love for the Cowboys. But this is, but these are these are people who they don't care. If it, if Zeke was on their team, it would be bullshit. It'd be the biggest travesty of justice ever in the history of the world. But because he's on the Cowboys and it's the Cowboys getting fucked over, fuck them good. They don't care. And that's the attitude we have, which leads us into a very slippery slope of this sets a dangerous precedent because eventually it's going to be your guys, and eventually. It's going to be you. You're the one that's going to be the victim of this type of bullshit. And then when you turn around and you go, wait a minute, hold on, people are going to go, we don't want to hear it. We didn't listen when it was them, so why would we listen when it's you? And you have no one to blame but yourself. But hey, you got to be a fucking you internet tough guy. You, 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 you got to be an internet tough guy and talk some shit on, an, on, on a link ESPN posted in the comment section. You had your shining moment. Hope it was worth it. Because eventually this shit will trickle down. Make no mistake. Sports is part of pop culture. As pop culture goes, this country goes. For better or for worse. For better or for fucking worse. That is the that is a fact. Is not, there is no argument. 
And if you are arguing with me, listening to this, stop your internal debate. You are wrong. Deal with it. Go get a drink. Go smoke something. Deal with the fact that you're wrong. Okay. Bottom line. And it, it once once they've completely turned sports into this type of shit, it's gonna bleed down into everyday life for everyday people. Where you're gonna be at work one day and someone's gonna walk in and throw a baseless accusation out there. And it's going to ruin your entire fucking life. And there'll be no one to help you. Why? Because you didn't give a fuck when it wasn't happening to you. And therein lies equality. <laughs> I, we're, we're, we really need to stop calling it what it is. It's not equality. It's vengeance. It's, it's as Aaron puts it on, on Unregimented all the time, it's an overcorrection of the scales. Instead of balancing the scales, they throw a twenty fucking thousand pound dumbbell on one side and a and, and a one ounce feather on the other and say good enough. That's all it is. I'm just gonna call it karma and let it go. And if that's in here, if the, here's the thing: if these people would come out and say, "Yeah, we want vengeance," I wouldn't I wouldn't agree with them, but I'd have a begrudging respect for them because at least they're not bullshit. They're not full of. They're not bullshitters. But they're lying not only to everybody else, they're lying to themselves. And it really, it really is another part of the problem. We've gotten so good at lying to ourselves in society that we've become comfortable with lies and truth makes us uncomfortable. Truth will shut a room up quicker than announcing that you're going to have your balls laminated. <laughs> but just barely, though. It's close. You know, I, Hope Solo beats the shit out of her husband, Jeremy Stevens. Okay? It takes literally, what, five, six times of her being accused of domestic violence for the USA women's soccer team to finally give her the boot. You have a couple who, and forgive me, I don't remember their names because I don't watch the WNBA, but they're a married couple in the WNBA, two players who are married to each other, who beat the dog shit out of each other, and ESPN reported it one time for 15 seconds and then swept it under the rug. Now, could you imagine if... Matt Trainer and Misty May Trainer beat the shit out of each other. That would be that would be that's what that's what 6 p.m. ESP that's what 6 p.m. Sports Center would kick off with. It'd be a, they'd have a 30 minute special after doing fucking 20 minutes of it on Sports Center. Be on for a month. We would ha all of a sudden there'd be demands that, that that every baseball player needs to sit through fucking don't beat your wife class and all this good shit. Well, see, it's because of who's doing it. We, we were uncomfortable with the truth. We're uncomfortable with it because it's two lesbians doing it. Or it's a woman beating a man. So it doesn't fit the narrative of us of, of the, the, the toxic masculinity permeating the sports world. Just and here's the thing. No one cares. No one cares. Taylor Swift was on trial for all women last week. That's what I was reading. And and I'm talking to I'm talking to I'm talking to you, Chris. I'm talking to you, Earl. I'm talking to myself, and I'm talking to everybody who's listening to my voice. None of us care. None of us care enough to do anything about it. None of us care enough to speak out about it. Oh, fuck it, it ain't happening to me. Oh, well, no big deal. No sweat off my balls. Huh? I'd be lying if I didn't say uh, But I guess, too, I, for me personally, I, I just lately, I've just kind of lost steam with expending energy on things I can't control. Like, eh. Like we have our we have our little platform here. We have our megaphone. We try to put you out our logical thoughts into the zeitgeist, you know, once a week. And I figure here's what's scary. Here's what's, here's what's here's what's scary, Chris. Ten, fifteen, twenty years ago, these nutbags that are that are that are fanning the flames of this type of horse shit, they couldn't do anything about it either. They just cried and whined and pissed and moaned and organized. It's true. And they turned they turned a percentage, a tiny percentage of this population into a special interest group that now makes decisions for the majority of us. Hey, the rationalists. That's what we'll call ourselves. We'll start they're starting to move right now. In Twenty years. <laughs> Try to restore rationality back into the American psyche. Is that even possible? Is that a pipe dream? Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I got, I got, hey, I got to worry about, you know, my first fantasy football draft. Uh, I got a lump on my nuts that, you know, has been bothering me. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to make a living on a well, little pittance I get paid. So I, I don't have time to fucking, to, 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 I, I don't have people to, to prop me up financially. Why I organize with every fucking 
disenfranchised person I can find on the internet under a catch-all banner and demand that the, the, the vast majority of people change the way that they've agreed in, in, in a societal contract to, to, to behave so me and my tiny percentage of the population can be comfortable. So what? You don't have time to go sit at a protest for like four months? No. And what, what a loser I am, you know. I <laughs> know, right? You're, you're doing nothing. I'm going to work. People, shit costs money. What? What was that, Iceman? No, I sleep blurp. I blurp bleep. Yeah, you sound like an Autobot, dude. <laughs> oh my god, can you guys hear me? No, I can make out. Can you hear me? But it sounded like you were fucking calling from underwater. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. Optimus Prime. Well, he's got some weather in his area too. Yeah, I mean that could be the that could be the issue. So, Ice Man, just stay oh, there. Oh, it's real bad here. Oh, there you go. Wherever you're doing, stay right there. All right, sweet. So, what were you trying to say? Said, I want Rich in a, a uh, protest one. God damn. Put him in. <laughs> oh. oh, this is taking a turn for the comical. All righty. Neat. You wanna try one more time there, Earl? And then we'll just kinda keep going. You jump in. I said Rich needs to take part in a protest just once so I can put him in a meme. Oh. That's a long way to go. It's a, it's a decent payoff. What you Rich in a protesting meme? What would be the purpose of that? Every so so I can get a bunch of people who disagree with whatever the fuck I said to dox me and go to my boss and go, he needs to be fired, my boss will go. I ain't going to fire him because that motherfucker will come back with a machine gun and kill everybody. Yeah. You fire him. He will literally go postal. <laughs> I'm firing him. You fire him. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the, that's the beauty of, of, of my situation. I work for a company that's firmly in my corner, so go ahead. Knock yourself out. Uh, it's all fucked up, man. That's the beauty of working for a, 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 a small businessman. That is true. But anyways. So, Zeke's so, so yeah. We're, it's yeah. one of the few things that all three of us agree on on this show. Zeke's getting and, you know, fucked. And, and, and let me clarify. Let me clarify. And this isn't backpedaling. This is just honest. This is just honest to God how I feel. If they had pressed charges and it went to court and it turned out he beat the shit out of that woman, throw his ass out of the NFL. I ain't got a fucking problem with it. I'm not saying people should not be punished for crimes they're convicted of. All right? Playing in the NFL... Is not it just like we've went over this with Colin Kaepernick? It's not a fucking guarantee. You're not entitled to that position just because you can do the job. There is more than there is more than that that comes with it. Every rookie symposium, Herm Edwards gets up there and explains this to these guys. Guys, at the at the end of at the start of the season, there's going to be 53 spots, and if you're lucky enough to have one, you better cherish it because if you fucking get cavalier and you start acting like you're entitled to that spot. There will be ten guys coming up behind you to take it from you. Today, they could be here tonight. You know, the last hard knocks ha- that, that, that just aired on Tuesday. Uh, one of the three guys fighting for a backup position for the Bucks. I can't remember his name. He's a, he's an unsigned uh, free agent uh, that, that's playing for the backup quarterback position. He was like, "So wait a minute." They can cut you, and they, and and Jameis Winston goes, yeah. And he goes, so they can cut you even when it's down to the fifty-three man roster. And Ryan Fitzpatrick goes, they can cut you anytime they want for any reason they want, man. Cut you right now for being stupid. For asking that dumbass question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that that is the nature of that of that business, right? And yes, if if his team said, look, you know, you hit a DJ. You've had issues in the past. Like basically, if they pulled a pack, if they if they if they they pulled a pack man and said, you you know, you got one strike, you got one strike policy applies for you from here on out, and he fucked up, then oh well, that's on him, right? But this is the 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 body that governs the league. Going no, we're not. We don't even trust our teams to handle this in house. And when you, that's a vote of no confidence, basically, in every fucking NFL team. And if I'm an NFL owner, 
I'm looking at Goodell going, motherfucker, get your resume up to date because you ain't going to be here much longer. Because mm-hmm. ultimately, he works for them. So, I don't know. He's 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 pissing on a lot of people's shoes. He's pissed on Robert Kraft's shoes. He's now pissed on Jerry Jones' shoes. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, those, are, those are two very powerful owners in the NFL. So, I... I for his sake, I because I, I don't think he's a very good commissioner. I think it it it, it, it goes the worst commissioner it, in the history of any league is Gary Bettman, and he's pulling up as a very close second. I'm talking if Bettman comes to an abrupt stop, Dell's head's going to go about a foot and a half up his fucking asshole because that's how close behind he is. Yeah, not a fan of either. I mean. Uh... I just keep thinking Goodell's going to be the guy that ruins the NFL. I, I, he's, I don't know. I mean, he's letting up. Like what? They can they can wear more creative shoes now, and they can do their end zone dance. That's great, I guess. But shit like this, I, I just I don't like what this says, man. Like I don't know we're just the the mere impropriety. You know, I can threaten your livelihood. Fuck that. I, it, w- I think we are right now, and I hope I'm wrong. I really do. But I think right now we are watching the beginning of the end of the NFL as we know it. Oh, man. That this sport, in a matter of 20 years, is going to look and be so different that it, we're not even going to recognize it. That, that, that kids born right now, when they're 20 years old and they go to a football game, are going to sit and listen to the old-timers talk about back in the day and they're not going to be able to comprehend watching a game like that. Like it's going to be like if 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 we were at a fucking Lions game and all of a sudden someone from like like the Roman Coliseum days showed up and started talking about well we used to actually watch real lions eat people. We used to fight a lion, we, pussies. You know, we would go, "What the fuck? You can't comprehend that shit. That's crazy." Is this going to turn into flag football? Dude, I'm out. At flag football. Yeah, I, I, you know, some form of it, maybe not flag football, but it's, it's going to turn into, it's going to turn into something. It's going to turn into the type of, like, maybe two hand touch, you know, uh, you're not allowed to hit a guy, you know, you're only allowed to, like, wrap tackle him, like, like, at his waist. You hit him above the below, you know, above the bottom of the numbers or below mid thigh. That's a penalty of some sort. Uh, I mean, but that's going to be until players start bouncing their head off these fucking, you know, the, the, these these artificial turfs and, and still get concussions. I mean. Well, I mean, you're never going to stop the brain rattling around in your skull. You, you, but that's, there's nothing that can prevent that. You know? that's, the, that's the smoking gun. That's the smoking gun. That's what's going to finally bring down the NFL. Because the fact that of 100 former players, 99 of them showed signs of CTE, that article was pushed in circles that don't give a fuck about the NFL. But they could go, well, see, look how barbaric it is. Do you want your... And, and, and here's where it's going to start. It's going to start with mothers. Do you want your sons playing this game? Because I've heard... Yeah, you can buy me a house. I've, I've heard... Former NFL players give interviews in the last couple of weeks, and they'll say, "Well, oh, you know, your son, he's getting to that age where, you know, he's going to play high school sports, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I'd say more often than not, they say, yeah, you know, I, I, if he wants to play football, more power to him. You know, it, it's they teach him to tackle differently now than they did when we were in, the, in, in high school. You know, in high school, they told us to take the crown of our helmet and bury it in the sternum. You know, now they, they, they you know, they teach a different technique, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But they're still <laughs> get, get in socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We do an Indian hump dance around them. <laughs> Our cheerleaders be on the sideline like he's paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> get in socks. Get in socks. Tied to our helmet. <laughs> but no, I mean, but there's still the fact that, like, you know, and I'm just, I'm just. I'm just spitballing the numbers, but out of like let's say ten interviews I heard with former players, seven said they would rather, you know, that they that they would they're okay with their sons playing football. That's still three out of ten, and you know that when you get to the mothers of these fucking guys, 
that that, that number is basically going to flip. Oh no, my baby. Oh no, I can't have that. Feed I mean, out fear. I, it's a great tactic nowadays. It's it's how you get shit done. It's how you get to be president. Wait, I mean, well, wrong, po- wrong podcast. But I mean, it's it's is it is there any political motivation that that or or any, any tool in the, in the politician's tool belt that works better than get you to fear something? Whether it be someone who's a different color than you, someone who lives in a different country than you, people who make more or make less than you. I, I mean, that's that's how all politicians operate. You know, back in the back in the day, it was you know the rulers were decided through bloodline. You know, there was no there was you know you didn't have to present anything. You didn't have to be a worthy successor to the throne. You just had to have the right blood and the right birth order, and boom, you're sitting on the throne. Nowadays. You know, America, at least how it was conceived, it was the best man for the job. Well, they've abandoned that, and nowadays it's just a person that can that can get the most fear mongering, get the most people scared to go out and vote against something, not for something, but vote against something because they're afraid of it. And I, if you think that that is is, if you think corporate America, if you think the people looking to to get and believe me, there are people out there who hate sports for whatever reason. They see it as you know toxic masculinity, or they equate it with you know war or whatever the fuck. I mean, people. There are people walking around on this planet who think that lizards rule the fucking world. All right, I mean, there's no far-fetched scenario too far out there for people to fucking you know, some people to buy into Zenu and all that. Exactly. I mean, so, and this, this is just a perfect, this is just the perfect fucking opening. They've been waiting for this. They've been waiting for this fucking 99 out of a hundred former players. They've been waiting for that, that report to come out. Now, if that report comes out that it's biased as fuck, that the numbers were, you know, they, they, they juked the stats, you know, they fudged the numbers. It's not going to matter. The damage has been done. It's already in the, it's already in the public psyche that 99 out of a hundred people who play football into college and further have irreparable brain damage. Yeah. You can't unring that bell. I just realized what I said, but whatever. I own it. <laughs> And by the way, everybody, uh, Iceman has uh, departed. He, he promises he'll he'll be back next week on his laptop, and not a lightning storm. So yeah. Well, this is just a. If you're tuning in for the first time this week, this is not the the, yeah. the week from a te- from a technical standpoint. Yeah, I mean, tech problems. Iceman bouncing. Let's just let's just put it this way: go download any other random episode and fast forward to any other random point in the episode, and that's. I, I'm going to guarantee you nine times out of ten, you're going to find a higher quality of, of sound <laughs> than what you got this week. So we we apologize profusely. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it was either don't do a show or work with what you got. And, yeah. I mean, God damn it, this is a show that I think I've, have I missed an episode yet? Uh, This one? No. Yeah. We've missed some weeks, but as far as you missing a show, show no. Yeah. So, and ever since Earl's joined, I don't think we've we've skipped a week. No. You know that's been a year, going on a year now. So. Yeah, we are, we're this close, everybody. Well, anyways, enough enough of our half-ass excuses for uh, our, our our issues here. Um, I mean, I, you know, you and Iceman both fucking have a legit legit beef with this story. Which is, you know, I've already seen this fucking movie. I, no one asked for a sequel. I mean, it's the story that keeps just fucking giving, and that's this whole anthem protest. Um, you know, Marshawn Lynch and Michael Bennett has thrown their hats into the ring with this. Um, I've actually heard stories. I don't, I don't know how legit they are. I don't know if this is Michael Bennett trolling people in the media. But apparently he even says that he's going to write a book about this entire subject. Uh, um, I know that he recently came out in an interview and said, uh, 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 yeah, he's going to write a book titled Things That Make White People Uncomfortable. And on the heels of that, he came out and said that involvement of white players in the protest of the anthem would actually help further the cause. 
I mean, I don't know whether you agree with the protest or not. I mean, I think that's pretty much duh. I mean, they file that under no shit. Why's gotta be? Why's gotta be a dick it, the, about it? It's just the more the more players that, that join, obviously, the more legitimate the cause is going to be in some but in some people's eyes. I mean, oh, and, okay, and if, if you're a listener of this show, you know how I feel about fucking Colin Kaepernick's protest. I understood why he did it. I think he went way too far with the fucking. The, the, the Sox depicting cops as pigs and he really was just did he read the room wrong to come out wearing a fucking Castro shirt right after Castro died trying to sing his praises yeah. that just <laughs> dude you did he, you did not know the room you were playing to at that point dude <laughs> yeah and so I mean you know besides that look I get it right and to be honest with you I, it doesn't bother me that people, oh my God, someone burned a flag. Someone disrespected the national anthem. They're disrespecting our troops. That is the, I never saw it. How the fuck is, is refusing to stand for the national anthem disrespecting the troops? Let me tell you something. The troops went over and fought for the Constitution, which gives you the freedom to burn the fucking flag and not stand for the anthem, right? So to try to say it's to try to make a correlation there is. It was asinine, in my opinion. Has anyone called out? I think Marshawn Lynch is a lot smarter than people give him credit for. Has anyone called out the social commentary in his? Dude, he said on a cooler and ate a banana. I mean, come on. It seems like pretty. It doesn't even really seem subtle. I, I agree with you. Mar I think Marshawn Lynch is way more intelligent than a lot of people give him credit for. Uh, um, he's smart enough to know that sometimes the better part of valor is silence, which is why he he was smart enough not to talk to the press mm -hmm. when he could have been e when he could have easily been one of those guys that. And if you've seen him in interviews where he's comfortable with the with the interviewer in a one on one situation, or he's comfortable with the people around him when the camera's rolling, he's the type of guy that can easily get on a roll talking and say something that gets taken out of context, or he says something in jest that someone doesn't find funny. And all hell breaks loose, you know. So he, he the fact that he was like, nah, I'm not going to give you any ammo. To me, that, that tells me right there, he's he's way smarter than a lot of people give him credit for. Um, I didn't know that he was sitting there eating a banana. I would think at this point he's savvy enough to know that every single thing he does, especially if he's sitting for the national anthem, there's a camera on him the entire time. So I would say that that was definitely a thought out situ uh, a thought out situation. Absolutely. But then you're going to have people who just don't understand it and go, "Well, why would he do that? Was he calling himself an ape, a chimp?" It's like eh, you're the same people that don't get satire and and irony. But some people just you are never going to get the, those things. So there's no there's no there's no point in discussing it with them. But. Yeah, I think you, I think you bring up a very good point with that one. I didn't even think about that because I, I didn't even realize he did that. Saying he won't be your dancing monkey? That's what I took you know, from it. That's, yeah. Um, now, the, the... Well, too, because also, I mean, you got to think about the shit that went down the prior day as well. You could have had a lot, a lot of that. Probably had something to do with it as well, with, with both him and Michael Bennett, perhaps. Yeah, but Michael Bennett was speaking out about this beforehand. Um, I don't know how valid this is, but people around Marshawn Lynch, I guess I guess you could say people in his entourage, former teammates have said that, yeah, he sat during the National Anthem before and no one made a big deal about it. I mean, I think, I think one is that you have people who are so hyper-aware and sensitive of it now that they're looking for it, whereas before... If you saw a player wander off from the sideline during the national anthem, it wasn't a big deal. But the minute Kaepernick took a knee and when someone said, why'd you take a knee? And he said, I took a knee in protest of why should I stand for a national anthem of a country that doesn't value my life? I think people automatically grew some extreme rabbit ears for that fucking situation and are now looking for anything. Look, the black man's not standing. Get him. Isn't that really how it comes off? Well, lately, I mean, dude, if you seems. have if if you have no problem, if you or excuse me, if you have more of a problem with an NFL player refusing to stand or in a national anthem, than you do with the cases we see day in and day out of 
police brutality. If you can so find an excuse for those, but you 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 can't you can't get to sleep at night because a guy fucking took a knee to protest that type of shit. I think your priorities are a little bit backwards. And once again, and I'm not even saying I'm not I'm not saying that all police are fucking like that. Fuck all the police. I'm not I'm saying all that, I'm dead at all. But I'm sorry, there's just too much evidence out there that there are police that are either poorly trained or don't give a fuck about their training. And they feel that when they pull you over, they can do whatever the fuck they want to do to you with impunity. As, as long as they keep screaming, stop resisting. And I, I, I'll do my best, if not for this show, for unregimented, to dig up the video of a police officer that he that he recorded in his squad car on duty in uniform describing what is considered resisting arrest because the bar is set so low to where if they grab you and you're not expecting to be grabbed and you tense up that's resisting arrest in his mind he can do whatever he needs to do to get you on the ground and handcuffed at that point and i'm sorry but if you're sitting there having a conversation with someone and maybe it's a heated conversation a contentious conversation it's a conversation with a police officer who's making an accusation about you doing something that you weren't doing and i will say this if you argue with that cop you're stupid in the first place but arguing with a cop is no excuse to get the shit beat out of you arguing with a cop is just all as long as no one puts their hands on anybody and no one is fucking trying to harm anybody else. Arguing with a cop should just guarantee you you're going to get a ticket and you're going to have to go to court to fight it. It shouldn't mean that you have to fear for your fucking life. It's true. But once again, we don't live in a world where things ha happen because they should. We live in a world that things happen because they happen. We have to deal with the world the way it is. And if a cop grabbing you unexpectedly and you tense up even the slightest is, is enough for him by the law to say you were res resisting arrest then that bar is set so low then i can guarantee you if a cop ever if i'm ever fucking stopped and i ever for whatever reason forget who the fuck i am and start arguing with the cop like i'm someone special and i'm above the law and he grabs me and i tense up and get the shit beat out of me i mean how do you how do you how do you how do you argue against that? I mean, that is basically saying if you breathe at me, I take that as assault, so I'm, I have the right to defend myself. You know that these these are real issues that get brought up, but they're totally lost in this in in the discussion of hey, because if you this is I'm, my mind's racing ahead of myself and I'm trying to slow it down. <laughs> What's getting lost in, in all this bullshit about, about fucking people, you know, players kneeling and players not standing, is what, why they're doing it. The entire discussion has went to, why aren't these players standing, instead of, what are they protesting? And do I necessarily agree with everything a player who's, who's done this? Because there were players that did it last year besides Colin Kaepernick, right? They've been magically lost in, in the ether of our memory because it's just, we're just so focused on Colin Kaepernick. It's just, oh, 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 well, those other players, whatever. But I mean, the discussion should be, why are they kneeling? Not, they need to stop kneeling. And if I was them, I would be kind of, I would, I would go see the fact that we're arguing about whether I'm kneeling or standing and ignoring the reason I'm doing it. You're just adding fuel to the fire of my case that people don't give a shit. People don't care until it's them. Yeah, that's how we're, isn't that how we're wired, though? Uh, or, or we're just talking about it, 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 it does affect us, so fuck it. You know, which brings us around to uh, Sporting News had an article about uh, Drew Michael Finley, and, and I'm going to read the article here, that way we get some context of it. Former tight end, this was updated at 8.30 tonight on Wednesday, and it's roughly about 11 o'clock. So this is about as up-to-date of an article as I could get to read. Former tight end Jermichael Finley expressed strong feelings about national anthem protests by the Raiders, Lynch, and Seattle Seahawks Michael Bennett, as well as Kaepernick. He later seemed to dial things down on Twitter. First, Finley criticized Lynch and Bennett's motivation for sitting down for the national anthem before exhibition games last weekend in an interview with TMZ Sports. He said sitting for the anthem was not really in their heart that they want to do that and called the pro 
protest a marketing tool for the players. Lynch didn't say much about the reasons for sitting during the anthem, but Raiders coach Jack W. said Lynch told him it was not a form of anything other than me being myself. After Bennett sat for the national anthem for an exhibition game against the Chargers, he said, I want to be able to use this platform con- to continuously push the message of how unselfish you can be as a society. How we can con- continuously love one another and understand that people are different. And just because they're different, it doesn't mean you shouldn't like them. Finley also echoed the words of Michael Vick in criticizing Kaepernick when asked if he thought the former 49ers quarterback who knelt for the anthem last season has been searching for a new team since March wasn't true to his cause and kneeling for the anthem. Finley said, I do. He's wearing the Afro, the Afro puff. Come on, man. Put that off your head. Write it up or something. Vick later apologized for his comments. Finley sort of apologized. On Wednesday, Finley tweeted the following two messages. The first seems to allude to his comments on the anthem protest. The second, posted two hours later, appears to be Finley taking a step back from what he said in the interview. First tweet was said, stand for your country. A couple hours later, second tweet was, I've taken down my own advice and reached out to someone so I can educate myself on how to contribute to solving racial injustices in America. Finley spent his entire five-year career with the Packers and retired in 2015. Later Wednesday, Finley's wife, Courtney, ripped her husband's comments in a, I think they're wrong here, I think that's his ex-wife, in a uh, Twitter post. She said, this serves as a reminder, in case you have forgotten, you are black, the athletes most, and then it cuts off. Hold on, that doesn't make any sense. This is, you are fake news. No, you're just poorly <laughs> edited. You're just a poorly edited, uh, you're poorly- this serves as a reminder Edited news. Edited news. <laughs> okay, here it is. This serves as a reminder in case you've forgotten you are black. The athletes, for most people, you are telling to sit down or stand and shut up are the very men who are protesting for your safety and equality in a country that has nearly revoked the right based on your skin color. As a biracial mother of four black boys that have been left to be raised by a single that have been left to be raised by a single mother. Which let's point out here that's that's a pretty petty thing to throw in the middle of something that has nothing to do with anything, but whatever. I have deep and desperate gratitude for those that use their platform to fight for our community's justice, safety, and equality. Your social media comments are absurd and offensive, not only to me, but to the nation that is crippled with hate. Don't attempt to silence men that are brave enough to be a voice to those that have had their cries muffled. Don't be so pathetically thirsty for attention that you choose to devalue another man's motives. Don't choose to be insulting and imply professional athletes have no place in changing the world. More importantly, don't forget to look in the mirror and see that you are, that you too are black and have an obligation to derail racism the best you can for yourself and others. If you don't want to be part of this resolution to the racial inequities in this country, that's on you. But for the sake of our four sons, don't be part of the problem. I pray you will reevaluate your stance. So, yeah. We have an athlete who basically came out, and then his ex-wife decided to jump in there, get a nice little dig at him. And I think this is just, to me, this is just a, a prime example of you have a bunch of people who I don't, I'm not convinced give a fuck about this issue strongly one way or the other who are looking as a chance to raise their Q rating. To jump out there and get their name in the fucking paper. Yeah, uh, you know we, we're talking about Marshawn Lynch and Michael Bennett, right? But that, but I mean, but uh, th- those are players that are actually doing something, playing football. Here you have a former player hops in, gives his opinion on it, which he has every right to, and then you got his ex-wife who comes in and starts airing their dirty laundry about their fucking, you know, she's his ex and she's been left to raise four children on her own, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, left her. Yeah, let. Well, what the fuck's that an, have to do an, with an ex NFL player? I'm sure she's getting nothing every month. And on top of that, she tries to. I think very. It's a very thinly veiled attempt to fold this over into the issue that Finley was commenting on in the first place. For her to kind of tag that on as as an afterthought. Finley's got a Super Bowl it, ring, right? So she's probably getting enough money per month to hire someone to raise those four kids for. Her. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to make a fucking judgment call on their fucking domestic situation. I don't know it, 
Mm-hmm. You know, but in my experience, when a relationship goes bad, usually the person doing the most mudslinging after was the person that was probably doing the most mudslinging during the relationship. That, that you don't. A relationship doesn't go bad, and all of a sudden, a, a, a church mouse turns into a fucking rabid lion. Yeah, operative word here, uh, ex-wife. So, I mean, it, to me, this this smacks of she has a bone to pick with him, valid or not. I don't know. I don't know enough about Jermichael Finley's fucking private life to comment. But once again, it's like he made a comment as an ex-player on what current players are doing. The only reason anyone gives a fuck about your comment is because you used to fuck this guy. (laughs) Buzzing. But true. I'm sorry. What the fuck? Yeah. I mean, I maybe, 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 maybe I'm too, I'm too progressive for women like her. But to me, you as a woman, I would be offended if I'm defined by who I used to let slide some dick in and out of me. (laughs) Used to house his penis. Yeah. I would piss me off. So, but I mean, (coughs) <coughs> Excuse me. I think Michael. I think Michael Bennett is the is the mouthpiece for this this anthem protest that Colin Kaepernick maybe isn't comfortable being. I don't know. I mean, we kind of went over this either last week or the week before, but I mean, he really got involved and started giving a shit about all this social justice stuff when he started dating the woman he's with, and she's a very vocal proponent of it. Um, which once again smacks to me of, you know, that just, that just comes off as, you know, some John and Yoko shit. Um, Michael Bennett seems like he truly gives a fuck and he's speaking from his heart on this subject and he might end up ironically being the better face for this movement than, than Kaepernick, the person who sparked it off. I mean, because what... What is the point? Why are these guys doing this? If they're truly doing it to draw attention to a subject, is there, and enough, try to get some, is there enough attention on it? And to try to get some change from the from this subject, to try to elicit change, to be the catalyst that brings about the change. Constant talking about you're blacklisted by the NFL or owners are afraid to hire you because they're afraid they're going to lose X amount of their fan base. That's not helping the situation. To me, it seems like Michael Bennett kind of came in and refocused, at least is trying to refocus the conversation back on why the fuck the protest is happening in the first place. And if you notice, he chose his words very carefully. He wasn't throwing around adversarial language to anybody. He wasn't throwing around antagonistic language to anybody. He was talking about us, we, love, all together. And that's something that too many people who who like to get in, get in these protests don't do. They want to throw out the antagonistic and, and divisive language because they think that, I don't know, that makes them, gives them some validity that it really doesn't. It just makes you look petty in my book. I'm just, I guess what I'm saying is, in a very verbose way, I, be, I, I, I buy Michael Bennett's looking for a solution to this situation. Whereas Colin Kaepernick, I think, started doing it, it blew up, and it quickly got a got out from under his control, and it took on a life of its own. On top of that, how many times have you pointed out Bennett's in the proper fucking area of the country on the proper team to do this shit? Oh yeah, Seattle. They will eat that shit up with a spoon up there. There's tons of so, guilty white people up there. You know, and I know I know you're saying it half in jest, but I mean to me it's not even. I, I don't feel guilty for being white. I just look at I look at police beating the shit out of somebody, and that's the, that's their go to fucking move on how to handle a situation. Is yeah, that's probably not the way, the best way to do it. And on top of that, if you grow up in a situation where you're constantly watching, that is the first response of the police when dealing with people who look like you. Why the fuck wouldn't you run from them? And if you run from the police, you just guaranteed an ass whooping. And I'm sorry, but where in the law does it say the police have the right to beat the shit out of you, like six on one, if you run from them? Isn't what, what we were talking about earlier? Isn't it, isn't it classified as resisting? Okay, but still, the guy's handcuffed on the ground. You got six cops standing up. One cop with his knee, with his knee on his neck, and they're beating the shit out of him. When Bernie Mac said, "If you steal my car, 
and you run from the cops, you need to be beat. That was a joke. He was a comedian. These cops were taking that way too fucking seriously. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I guess their their whole point is they they hope this can bring about some change. I mean, it's, it's, it started about starting a dialogue. It's been started. You know, we don't we we don't need to get started. It's going quite fine. Oh, says you're still connected, Rich. Can you hear me? Now I can hear you. You were coming through like Earl was. Uh, bleep, blorp, blorp, bleep. Yeah. Uh, I forget what the fuck I was saying. <coughs> so it must have been super important. <coughs> well, did I mean, did, did you hear the point I made about, you know, Bernie Mac said if you steal his car and run from the cops, you get you deserve to get your ass beat. And I said, he's a comedian. That was, that was a joke. That's what comedians do, tell jokes. Mm-hmm. And it seems like way too many cops heard that joke and took it to heart and said, yeah, that's exactly what needs to happen. Yeah. and Well, no, I was saying, you know, these guys, if their goal is to start a dialogue, well, I mean, the dialogue's been started. You know, thanks for the hearts in the right place. But, you know, maybe, maybe, hopefully, maybe, so, I mean, I, I sound so cynical when I say this, but I doubt, like, some guys not standing for the national anthem at a sporting event really going to bring about any plausible kind of change. But I don't know. no, and I think and I think we're very we're very far past the whole. We're trying to start a dialogue about it. Now is now is the point where if you were if you were trying to start a dialogue about it, your job is done. Now it's time for the people to stand up and who want to offer solutions and try to figure something out. And I'm not saying that that's not what happened with Colin Kaepernick. You know, from from what I hear, he did he did go to and hold like town halls with local police officers in the San Francisco, Oakland area, whatever, and 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 residents of that area. All right, but I don't know. It, this is one of those things. It's like this is so ingrained in the culture of being a police officer. If someone runs from you, you have the right to beat the shit out of them. Like that is their. I guarantee you, if you ask cops off the record, they will all say that is their. Not all of them, excuse me, but most of them. And when I say most, I do mean the lion's share. Will say, <clears throat> "You're goddamn right. It's our. It's our right to beat the shit out of somebody. They ran from us. So you know, I don't know, man. That's a bigger problem than the NFL's." And a few players in the NFL is going to solve. I agree with you on that one. Yeah, that's a that's an inherent problem in the system. And I mean, I, I think also we, at some point we have to we as NFL fans and NFL players and NFL owners have to go. Okay, if you don't want to stand, don't stand. And we need to fucking move on from this because at this point, this is just we keep stirring the pot, and eventually someone's. Someone's going to get too worked up over it, and, it's, and, and the internet comment section is going to spill over into real life. People are going to start getting hurt. Yeah, I mean, that's... I could see... I, I mean, fuck, someone walked into a pizza place in Washington started shooting people. You know? Because well, of shit they saw on the internet, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, tell me someone's going to walk into a fucking stadium and start plucking off people who aren't standing for the anthem, you know? I mean, A couple I don't years know ago, I'd say that's crazy. Now... Nope. I mean, I don't know if it'll get that far necessarily, but I mean, I could definitely see, I could definitely see someone who is already mentally unstable being pushed over the edge and maybe there'll be an incident that happens outside of a stadium, you know, maybe in a parking lot, maybe on the way from the parking lot to the stadium, you know, whatever. And when that happens, we all lose because at that point it becomes more security. You have, you have... You know, I don't want to say you're getting your rights taken from you because it's not like you got a right to tailgate. It's not like it's in the Constitution or anything. But then they're going to crack down on tailgates if it happens in in a parking lot of a stadium. You know, and that's we're all sports fans. You're not listening to this podcast if you at least I would hope you're not listening to this podcast unless you're a sports fan. Tailgating is like one of the one of the you know the big parts of football. You know, you get up early, you go out, you you know, you grill some food, you drink some beer, you throw the football around, you go in, you watch the game. I mean, if you took if you took tailgating away from college football, it would change the fucking landscape of college football completely. Holy shit! Yeah, I mean, yeah. think about how depressing Saturday morning would be. Hell, I even like just, just watching well, it looks fun. Watching Corso every fucking Saturday morning. That's what I'm saying. I mean, imagine if violence breaks out. Because something someone fucking 
you know, what, what is the term everyone uses now? They, they get radicalized on the internet, whatever. Someone, you know, who is already fucking five screws loose and, and, you know, almost every single fry short of a Happy Meal, reads something on the internet, gets a wild hair up their ass, goes to college game day and starts mowing people down in the background while they're fucking, you know, my Corso and, and the bunch are up there giving their opinions on live television. That's the end of that, dude. That's game over, bro. That shit will come to an end. Fuck that. And I'm. That shit is fun. And I don't end it. And I, I, I'm, I'm real fucking tired of losing the ability to have fun and 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 do things because of a few crazy fucking people here and there. And I don't care what side you're on. If you're an asshole who's out there killing people because you disagree with them over bullshit like standing for the national anthem, well then, motherfucker. At that point, can we just throw these people in prison in the deepest, darkest hole we can find and leave them there? Because the rest of us, we understand it's not that important. I'm not going to pick up a – you kick open my front door and try to discover my fucking – you know, my television and my computer and my guitar and claim it for the country of whatever the fuck. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to meet some resistance. <laughs> a little bit. Someone who, has a, someone who has a different opinion about a, 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 someone – kneeling during a national anthem no that does not require anyone to be violently assaulted or killed so i mean i guess we should just call i mean if we named these episodes we should just call this the debbie downer episode because eventually i think that's what's going to happen and i think if the nfl a sports podcast well I, I think if the nfl doesn't open up their fucking mouth and go look if they want to stand let them stand if they don't want to stand don't let them stand and if you don't want to watch our product don't watch our product but i don't know that any business like the nfl has the balls to do that anymore because in their mind, they're just watching those little bags of money fly away if they do that. But that's ludicrous to think that they, you don't think that if Fox drops them or CBS drops them, you know, the ABC and NBC are going to be there to pick up the slack or whoever. You don't think there's some upstart cable company out, cable channel out there be like, uh, hey, come over here. We'll give you a bucket of money. Oh, in a, in a heartbeat. That's the thing. I don't think, I, I don't think it would affect their ability to get the games on air i don't think any channel would stand up and say we because half the nfl is kneeling during the national anthem we're going to refuse to fucking to carry your your sport (laughs) even if the nfl lost a quarter of its viewership it's still one of the most viewed things in this fucking country on a week in week out basis i call up aaron and be like hey man can we figure out how to broadcast the nfl games you want to make a ton of money (laughs) All of a sudden, you see Aaron, Aaron turns into super sports guy. Yeah. He's like, he'll turn into Stump the Schwab, you know? He'll be like, I know everything about sports. Yeah. <laughs> I burned out my Wikipedia. I, I burned <laughs> yeah. out every Wikipedia entry of everything about the NFL. I've been reading Wikipedia for four months. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, since we're already on fucking football, I guess. Oh, uh, we are so close. Uh, we are less than a month. Anyway, continue. Uh, yeah, Jesus Christ. I mean, I know it's my team, but this Roberto Aguayo fucking clusterfuck that went down in Tampa Bay the last week. We, I mean, Jesus, watching Hard Knocks on Tuesday, watching him go three for seven, under 50 yards in practice, watching his fellow players call whether he was going to go wide right or wide left and getting it right. Damn. To his face before Damn. every kick, by the way. I mean... Is it going to be on this week's Hard Knocks? Him getting fired? Oh, it was. Oh. It came out Tuesday night. It aired. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He he missed an extra point, and he missed a field goal in the last minute of their week one game versus uh, Bengals. And... Dirk Cotter was basically like, and I can't remember the GM's name for, for the Bucks, but they were like, you know, off camera, away from the microphones, on the way back from that game, were like, he's got to go. And Dirk Cotter said, let me sleep on it. Woke up the next morning, called in the GM and said, yeah, I got to cut him. There's no way I can justify keeping him. I slept on it. Peace! Yeah. I mean, wasn't, and I'm not trying to rub salt in the wound here. Be smart ass, but wasn't he pick? Wasn't he, wasn't he their first round pick last year? No, they traded up in the second round to get him. Oh, it's so the second round. Okay, yeah, but still, but they traded up to get him. <laughs> 
And here's the thing. He was the most accurate kicker in NCAA football history. Something clicked in this guy. It had to have. This has to be one of the worst cases of the yips I've ever seen in football in my entire life. Damn. I mean, it just has to. There's no other explanation. There's nothing different from hitting a 50-yard field goal in, the NCAA, in, in college football and hitting a 50-yard field goal in fucking preseason practice. In fact, I would... I, I, I think anyone would tell you there's more pressure to do it during a fucking college football game than there is during practice. But for some reason, it, it got reversed. This guy got out of college, and all of a sudden, he couldn't hit shit. I mean, maybe it was because he was he got they traded up and drafted him so high, and the expectations were too much for him. But, I mean, when Nick Folk beats you out for your job, how old is that motherfucker? I know, right? I, I mean, dude, what, I, he's got, like, what, one bar on his helmet? <laughs> I mean, this is some like Morton Anderson shit going on here. I mean, Jesus Christ! The article that NBC Sports posted it uh, really put it in perspective. Folks, he's thirty-two, younger than I thought he was. Yeah, he seems like he's been around for a lot longer than that, though. But I don't know. Anyways, NBC, NBC Sports put out an article that they really crunched the numbers and broke it down. In 2016 NFL kickers. When it combined 85 for 150, 57% on field goals from 50 yards and beyond. In 1974, NFL kickers went four for 30, 13% from 50 yards and beyond. And what, 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 hold on a second, I'm trying to, Aguayo, da 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 da. He didn't make one 50 yard or greater field goal last season for the Bucs. Not. One Sucks. and on field goals of forty to forty nine yards, he he was worse than the average kicker in nineteen seventy four. He went four for for ten, so forty percent from forty to forty nine yards, while kickers as a whole in nineteen seventy four went forty four percent from the same distance. I mean, you have to go back to nineteen sixty six where you find a time where Aguayo might have been a decent kicker. Kickers as a whole went thirty five and for a hundred and two, thirty four percent from forty to forty nine yards. And one from one for seventeen, six percent on fifty yard field goals and greater. I mean and you the have Bears to go, picked him up. He's still in yeah, the NFL. And, oh my God, dude. I, I can and and I mean uh, I, I wish Iceman really hadn't dropped out because he'd have a lot to say about that. What the fuck are the Bears thinking? Oh, my God. I mean, dude, it's, it has to be. This has to be their mindset. There's no pressure on him now. He's going to go back to the, to the kicker he was in college. I mean, it, it, it has to be the mindset. But, I mean, if he doesn't, I, I mean, this guy, is, he's done in the NFL, right? If he doesn't fucking catch on with the Bears. I see what you're talking about, pro football talk. Robert, uh, Roberto Aguayo said kicking back half a century. I mean, it, I... I, he, dude, if he does not unfuck himself and catch on with the Bears this season and become their fucking kicker and start making field goals like an like, like just an average field goal kicker does these days, he doesn't even need to be Jason Hansen. Doesn't need to be Morton Anderson. Doesn't need to be Adam Vinatieri. Just make your average amount. He, if he doesn't do that, he has to be done in the NFL, right? You would think. I mean, Jesus Christ, Kick Delicious was like all the. The new hotness for a second here in Detroit. Where the fuck is he? He ain't in the NFL no more. Fuck no, because he's a soccer kicker. Yeah, but he was still making like, you know, fucking 65-yard field goals and shit. You know, they were just like, well, that's nice that you can do that in practice, but we're not going to fucking take a spot and putting you on our fucking team on the 53-man roster. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, as a Bucks fan, if it was a choice between kick Kickalicious and Aguayu, I'd give Kickalicious the spot. Because at least I know he can make a fucking field go over 50 yards in practice, which means even if you have his 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 chance to do it in the game, it's still better than fucking a better percentage he's going to make it than fucking Aguayu. So I, this is, and I'm hard pressed to think of a bigger draft clusterfuck for the for the Bucks than this ever. I mean, I know they came into the existence 1976, a year before I did, but. I mean, Jesus Christ, dude. This has got to be up there with the worst draft fucking decisions they've ever made, if not the worst. Well, no, no Chicago's problem. I just, uh, it, 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 oh, man. Well, there's an article. NBC Sports says him getting cut shouldn't have aired on Hard Knocks. 
What? Let's see what blowhard piece of shit wrote this. Yeah, I want to hear the rationale uh, for this one. Mike Florio says it was a mistake. Uh, and, of course, it's a video, so I can't fucking read it. Uh, okay, here's my question. Has this idiot never watched Hard Knocks before? Who knows? I mean, it's it's our new crazy society. Let's see what he has to say. You know you can't hear. It never loads. In the weekend as the Buccaneers kicker claimed on waivers by the Bears on Sunday in between cut by the Bucks on Hard Knocks. And if you have HBO and had HBO turned on last night, or if you follow the NFL's Twitter feed, 23.9 million do, you saw the video of Aguayo getting the bad news from the Buccaneers. And this okay. brings me back to a point that I've had an Not issue doing with this for years facts now, right now. And, and I should have had this issue from the moment Hard Knocks debuted. Because one of the centerpieces of the series is bringing a guy in, sitting him down, and telling him that he's lost his job with the team. He doesn't like that. Him he's been abruptly traded like Vontae Davis. Hard Knocks Davis, does that in general. Indianapolis five years ago. These are private moments. Okay, well, that's a little less hypocritical than territory. He says that they are private moments. Getting chewed out by the coach on the sideline and having everyone see it. There are certain things that go with the salary that you make as an NFL player. None of these guys are signing up for being cut on national television. And it's only. Oh, whatever. He's like, none of these guys are signing up for being cut on national television. Whatever. I'm d- I hit stop on the video. <laughs> that's just stupid. <laughs> You're like I'm done. That's 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 uh, yeah. I'm that's done. all the oversens. That's all the oversensitive bullshit I can take for for one day. Yeah, whatever, Mike Florio. I'm sure, you've been in the broadcast industry and getting paid to talk about football for years, but that's dumb. Dude, they get millions of dollars. They're well aware that the team is. Eh. Then don't come to training camp if you don't want to get cut on national television. Don't come to training camp. You know, it's funny because before this season kicked off, they had top five moments in Hard Knocks history, and I think it's been on for 12, 12 seasons now. I know there was a few years they skipped here and there, but I think 2002 was the first year, 2001. Anyways, long story short, I think the second biggest moment was – Basically watching Chad Johnson's career come to an end in Miami was when Chad Johnson got cut by the uh, by the Dolphins. And I mean, yeah, is it, a, is it a moment that sucks for Chad Johnson? Uh, yeah, no doubt. But I mean, from a truly, a true reality show, meaning that nothing is scripted. It is literally a camera in the corner of the room that's that's not being manned by a person. That's recording these, you know, these cuts. That's is a true of a moment to 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 life for an NFL player as you're ever going to get. They're and right. I mean, isn't every NFL player going to have to come to the point where they, unless they die in the prime of their career, aren't they going to have to come to the realization that they're going to have a meeting like that with a head coach, and that's going to be the end of their career? Uh, most of them. Quite honestly, your Brett Favre's and your uh, Tom Brady's are few and far between where you get to call the shot and when you're done. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I'm getting at. So, I I mean, I get that it sucks for the player, but the NFL has, through hard knocks, through the, the show on Amazon that I can't remember the name of off the top of my head, um, I mean, they basically opened up 24-7 access to cameras, you know, behind the scenes. And I mean, this is part of it. I, I, maybe, may, maybe I'm being too, too callous towards these players, but I mean, I no, I mean, they didn't sign up to get cut on national television. So what, when they do get cut, they can't read it in any news story. Can't be publicized. I mean, it's uh, just cause the camera isn't in their face. Doesn't mean they're still getting cut and not get, I don't know. Maybe I'm looking at a different situation. Differently, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm. It comes with the territory, man. You know, and especially too when you get drafted. Doesn't, doesn't HBO haven't they already said that who they're going to follow by the time the draft happens, or do they wait? I believe it's, I believe it's decided by the time the draft happens, yeah. especially with them pushing the draft back like they have. So if they really got a big problem with it, and don't report to training camp. 
Hey, you're going to be doing this hard knocks. Uh, I don't want to be on it. Uh, thanks a lot. No, no one will ever say that. Sounds like Mike Florio has a bigger... Like, have any players ever come out and said, I think it was bullshit how I got cut on national TV? I think in the culture of the NFL, if a player come out and said that, he'd be risking being called a pussy for the rest of his life. Yeah. By former, current, and future NFL players. I, I think the NFL is one of the few places where you better suck up that buttercup bullshit. Mm-hmm. That snowflake shit ain't gonna fly too 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 much, you know. I mean, it, it's uh, watching watching Hard Knocks as many years as I have. I kind of I'm starting to see the, the as Michael Rapport would say the skinny genification of the NFL start to leak in. But it's still a sport that's like you know they don't have a lot of compassion for the weak and the people that can't produce. I mean, you might like the guy on a personal level. But if you can't do the job, you simply can't do the job. Someone else will. So because because you ain't got time in the NFL. You got sixteen games. You got one game a week for four months. Is it? There you don't have eighty two games. You don't have one hundred and sixty two games. You got sixteen motherfucking games. No time for error. That's yeah. That's how I run my fantasy I, team. You know, I you very rarely see. Teams in the NFL make decisions based on, you know, but we really like this guy, so we'll keep him around. And I would go, I would say, I would, I would argue that when you've had teams that ran that way, 2000 Lions with Matt Millen, you know, is there was talk when he was running the team that, oh, these are Millen type guys, or, uh, you know, even so far in Seattle, it's working out for him, but, uh, Oh, shit. Who's Seattle's coach? I just drew a blank. He used to be coach at USC. Thank you, Pete Carroll. You know, that those type those type of coaches are few and far between that can succeed and be the compassionate type of coach. I mean, even even Tony Dungy. I mean, one of the one of the the most interesting things about watching a documentary about Tony Dungy was the first day he was head coach of the Colts and he walked in the entire you know, to address the entire team. The entire team is just talking and talking and talking and talking. He's standing at the podium a minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. And finally, guys are like, hey, man, shut up, man. The head coach is up there. And finally, the you know the whole team shuts up, and he goes, Tony Dungy, I'm your head coach. I'm just going to talk to you. I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to scream at you. That's not my style. Uh, basically, you're going to decide whether you want to be here or not. If it's more important to talk to the man next to you than to listen to what I got to say, you won't be here very long. I think that attitude's rare in the NFL, and it's even rarer to have that attitude and succeed with that attitude. So, I don't know. I think that guy's barking up the wrong tree. If you want sympathy and, and touchy-feely and all that shit... I don't know if sports is the place to go looking for that, especially professional sports. And I definitely think he's barking up the wrong tree if he thinks that the NFL is going to be the one to deliver it. Yeah, take it to the NBA. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. Where they love the whining and the crying. But um, yeah, I guess what the the, the last uh, last pro pro football story we have is uh, apparently half a dozen teams tried to get Calvin Johnson out of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> From the no shit file, you don't think Bob Kraft at least made one call? Like, hey, what will it take to get Tom Brady to throw to you? He said, uh, robot hands. Give me robot hands. Replace them. I'll come catch. Well, the interesting part is this is a CBS Detroit article by Evan Jenkins, who works for our sports uh, talk station, 97.1. And uh, apparently... A source through Bleacher Report says at least half a dozen teams reached out to Calvin Johnson to gauge whether he would consider returning to the field, but Johnson said no. Um, Report goes on to say Johnson's rights are still owned by the Detroit Lions, and teams would have to work out a trade in order to get Johnson on the field. And they go on to restate that he doesn't seem to have any interest in coming out of retirement, even though he did put in appearances uh, with the Oakland Raiders and Miami Dolphins during OTAs. Um, I guess in July he was asked flat out, and he he said it just wasn't for me anymore. Um, which I mean, I don't know how much of that is he understands the Lions aren't going to move his contract or the rights to him um, without basically holding the team that they do it to hostage. So he's like, "Fuck it, there's no point in coming back." Or if he really is done, uh, I mean, he's north of thirty, right? I believe he is now. Yeah, I think he's 30, 31 this season. North 30. His hands are all fucked up. Uh, 
wasn't the bottom part of him starting to get fucked up? I want to say a knee. Yeah, he had made he had made uh he had made some comments about uh um his his legs to to the local press at least. I mean, get out, uh, you know. He got well. The kitten was good. Hey, I made a whole bunch of money. I'm still relatively intact, and we're done. But you know, here you go. You got you got uh, <laughs> like Florio. Pro Football Talk, uh, uh, writing an article says that teams need to contact the Lions about Calvin Johnson right now. Uh, setting aside the fact that teams reaching out to Johnson about a potential return to football or, or tampering, there's a specific procedure that would allow Johnson to get back to football anytime he wants. All he has to do is show up. Specifically, he simply has to notify a commissioner that Johnson will be Ending his retirement and reporting to the Lions. At that moment, a $16 million salary for 2016 would immediately hit the books, along with the $16 million cap number. And the Lions, according to the NFLPA, currently having less than $8 million in cap space, would have to move quickly to avoid being out of compliance. The quickest, easiest move would be to release him, which would make him a free agent immediately. Another way to handle the issue would entail teams interested in Johnson reaching out to negotiate a face-saving trade for the Lions, which would allow them to get a little something in exchange for letting him go. However, Johnson's cap numbers gives him the upper hand. Uh, nine years ago, when Favre returned to the Packers and brought with him a $12 million cap hit, the Packers had the cap space to accommodate them while they figured out a trade. The Lions don't have that luxury. So if Johnson, who ostensibly retired for health reasons, but who has in recent months made clear that his lack of faith in the Lions' ability to win a Super Bowl was a significant factor, sees a chance to chase a ring, it would be easy for him to do it. The only question left to answer is whether he wants to. Now, that's an interesting scenario. If he came back and said, I'm unretired, just by doing that with his salary, he instantly fucks over the Lions. And didn't we just report on some local stories a couple weeks ago about how the Lions were kind of salty towards him because they thought that the whole reason he retired or no, no, that, that because he was salty towards the Lions when he retired because they wanted some of his signing bonus back. Yeah, they, didn't they want like uh thirty something? Yeah, well, no, it wasn't. Didn't they want like four million dollars back or some shit like that? I don't know if it was that much, but I I I know it was more. I I, I think it broke down to like I think it was a couple hundred thousand per year that it was left on his contract, which would have added up to like maybe one or two million somewhere in that that range. But, I mean, it is an interesting scenario. And if the Lions, who really, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, Iceman brought this up, which was, for, for those who are, he's not here to defend himself, so I'm going to fuck with him. Um, Iceman's the biggest fucking Lions homer I've ever met. They can do no wrong, seriously. I don't think Christians, I think Christians think Christ was less perfect than he thinks the Lions are. Um Picked him fourteen and two, everybody. And that, and that two, those two losses, it hurt him to say that he, they were going to get those two losses. The Detroit Lions, he picked to go fourteen and two this coming up season. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, you know he he brought up a point that they had kind of reached out and were like, "Hey, do you want to come to training camp?" And Johnson was like, "No, nah, I'm good." And I remember I asked him, "I'm like, why the fuck would all of a sudden they start sucking up to him?" He's like, because they sucked up to fucking Barry, and I think that they're realizing, you know, hey, we better keep the, the, the lines of communication as free of clutter as we can, because in 10 years, when we retire his number in the, in, the, in the ring of honor or whatever, put his number in the ring of honor for the Lions, you know, we're going to want him to come here. We're going to want him to, you know, the fans to have good memories of him, for it not to be a Fedorov situation. But, I mean, and maybe it was the fact that because he started talking and going to other teams' OTAs, they were like, oh, shit, if he comes back, we're fucked. So maybe it was a case of them trying to be as polite and nice to him as they could to keep him from coming back. I mean, let's be honest. If he comes back and they cut him, he's absolutely a free, unrestricted free agent. Yep. I understand he's 31. I understand his hands and his legs are starting to break down on him. But I also understand that he's Calvin fucking Johnson. And in the right system, he's not going to have to be the superhuman fucking robot that he was for Detroit. I mean, I think part of the reason Randy Moss had the season he had with his first season with Tom Brady is because of the system in New England. And if I remember correctly, Randy Moss was around the same age of Calvin then as Calvin Johnson is now. I remember when Randy Moss 
uh, went to New England, it was one of those he's still playing kind of moments for me. Randy Moss. Yeah, and all he did was go and, what, set the touchdown record for wide receivers that season? Yeah. So, I don't know. Things could get interesting. I will tell you this. If he does come back and he forces the Lions to cut him where he's an unrestricted free agent, I think he just burned a bridge with a lot of Lions fans. I think you're going to get a lot of butthurt and bitter Lions fans who be like, fuck him for the rest of his life. And, I mean, ultimately... It, <laughs> I understand that feeling, but these guys have a finite amount of time to make as much money as they, as they can. He's made his money. If he wants a championship, the clock is ticking, and he's got an even less of a window oh, he to win a championship. A fuck ton of money. It, it, it ain't even about money for this guy anymore. And he doesn't seem like the type of guy that was running around, you know, spending his money like Andre Risen. Like the shit was going out of style, you know. Yeah, I believe Calvin Johnson still has all of his original teeth. <laughs> so know, I'd be hard pressed to I find a photo of the guy wearing, you know, Mr. T type jewelry. Oh, well, I mean, this will this will be a uh, an interesting situation to watch because I mean, if you got a team that's a contender and they lose one of their top wide receivers and through back channels they get hold of him, yes, even though that is tampering, like you said. I, I mean, I don't know. In today's NFL, it doesn't matter what you what you can prove. An accusation is enough to punish somebody. I mean, 20 years ago, I would say if you can't prove it, then it didn't happen. But I mean, now all it would take is is it is the Lions to go, hey, someone fucking contacted him and was tampering with him, trying to convince him to to, to come back to the Lions, so we'd cut him so they could pick him up. Well, apparently it worked out with the Dolphins a couple of days last week. Which, I mean, get the fuck out of here, dude. Does he really think the Dolphins are contenders? <laughs> well, they got Jay Cutler. Oakland? That's a different story. That's, yeah. I mean, I think they're a dark horse to, to make it to the Super Bowl, let alone win it this year. But, I mean, compared to the Dolphins, yeah, the odds are very much in Oakland's favor over the Dolphins. I think Beast Mode gives Oakland a hell of a uh, bigger shot, you know, this year if Derek Carr breaks his fucking leg again right before the playoffs they got marshawn lynch they got a shot you know plus yeah. they got Mari cooper they got crabtree no. i mean i guess the, the the whole situation for them is if car goes down can they just bring in a game managing quarterback and still win hey colin Kaepernick. hey everybody Welcome i don't back know to the colin NFL. I don't know if Colin Kaepernick falls under the category of a game managing quarterback. I mean, dude, I've it's Oakland. like I said, it's right across the bay. Well, I mean, I hear you, but at the same time, I've watched too many fucking YouTube videos, you know, 30, 40 minute long videos of 10, 15 second long plays of him just constantly not seeing the open receiver, missing the open man, throwing in the double coverage, trying to force the ball, trying to make a play happen with his feet when he could have gotten a fucking huge gain with a throw. I don't know if that's a game manager, man. Game managers, it to me, plinks and ducks it down the field and waits for the fucking big play, and then he puts it up. And he knows his guy's coming down with it. Oh, you know, sure. that's That's just fucking around with Colin Kaepernick. Oh, I thought you were being serious. Oh, say, no, no, dude. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean that's that's we pretty much rang pro football for yeah I love it much of the stories as we can um, switching to college football because here on the second Michigan's going to have its first game and speaking of Michigan an anonymous CBS poll has named Jim Harbaugh college football's most overrated coach I can agree with that and that tell you the same thing I told Earl he ain't one shit I. I'm a U of M fan, and I'm right there with you. Yes, he's got a he's got a good record, but he's twenty and six in in two seasons. No Big Ten championship and no bowl game that's mattered. He, yeah, I, I've said it before. I say it again. You got to beat State. You got to beat Ohio State. You have to be. You have to get to be in that Big Ten championship game. And you have to be in the in the, in the talks for the playoffs for the national championship. That is that is that is the next level for him. He has set himself up to where that is the expectation. If he falls short on any of those, he only has himself to blame. Yeah. Because Jim, Jim Harbaugh's best cheerleader is Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, I mean, I like his style. I like what he's doing, but you got 
You, you got to beat the, the silver and red or whatever the fuck they are, maroon and silver. Oh, there's, a, there's an Ohio State graduate upstairs who probably couldn't tell you the colors either. But, you know, beating Michigan State, big deal. You're supposed to beat Michigan State if you believe the rivalry. And I'm a state fan. Win the Big Ten. Play for a national championship. When's the last time they played for a national championship? When, uh, when Tom was on the team? Well, I mean, dude, I, the first game of the first game of this season, Arlington, Texas, they play Florida. All right. I mean, that's yeah, this isn't this isn't the Tebow led Gators, but that's not exactly, uh, you know, a, a, an automatic win, you know. Yeah, but look, look I at their even... first home game, though. Their first home game is against fucking nobody. I had to look it up the other day. I was like, oh, that's a win. Way to give yourself a nice, easy nerf toss for your for your first home game. Well, they didn't do it. NCAA did. I mean, they play Florida. They play Cincinnati, Air Force, yeah. Purdue. And they have the bye. And I mean, okay, Purdue, State, Indiana, Penn State. So worst Rutgers, case scenario, Minnesota. they're 3-1 and one after the first month. That's worst case scenario. That's losing to Florida. But that's playing their division. You can't shit on them for playing their division, dude. I mean, they, they look, they had to agree to play Florida. It's not like pro football where, you know, the schedule is set years ahead of time. I mean, they had to agree to play Florida. Notre Dame's the one that backed out of playing them. But, you know, the quote-unquote rivalry between them. The Notre Dame's the one that said, no, we're good. Mm-hmm. So they're no longer on the schedule. I get the feeling Harbaugh was just fucking sitting there chomping at the bit to get at Notre Dame. Because I, I will say this. Yeah, he's overrated because he hasn't won shit. But I think Harbaugh has an immaculate. I mean, in his mind, he has the ultimate unshakable confidence in himself. Now, whether that's deserved or not is, I guess, the discussion. I mean, if you look at his track record, you know... <laughs> Seems like we can't do it. Talk about anybody without talking about Kaepernick. He made Kaepernick look like a world beater for two seasons. I mean, Stanford isn't exactly, you know, wasn't exactly known as a football school. Mm-hmm. Damn, is it nothing but Big Ten teams from the from Michigan State to the end of the season? Yeah. Wow, Michigan State, Indiana, Penn State, Rutgers, Minnesota, Maryland, Wisconsin, Ohio State. Woo! Oh. <laughs> Have fun. I mean, I can, I can, I can say this. Just looking at this schedule, I could see him losing to Florida. Mm-hmm. They shouldn't, but I could see him losing to Michigan State. I could see him losing to Wisconsin, and I can damn sure see him losing to Ohio State. Yeah, I can see, that, 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 I can see him losing to Penn State. Yeah, Penn State is. I'm on the fence about. It depends on the year for Minnesota. I mean, they are at Penn State. That's not a home game for them. So I mean that. I got to see how they play before I even think about Penn State. To me, I, I'm I'm exactly fifty fifty on them. I could, but I mean, I could honestly easily see them losing to Wisconsin, Ohio State, and Florida. And even though they should, on paper, beat Michigan State, I can see some bullshit last minute play that gives you Sparties a fucking reason to cheer yeah. <laughs> the next goddamn year. Because I work, I work with another one of you assholes, and he's like, <laughs> what? At first season, what happened? And I'm like, oh, yeah, draw me up the play where they planned that, okay? You know as well as I knew that was dumb fucking luck. Don't act like that was skill on your team's part. I'm not one of those fans. I'm well aware that that was fucking like, holy shit. Sometimes the ball bounces your way because that's literally what happened. So, yeah, so there you go. Now, what's interesting is the rest of these people on this list, Harbaugh was named the most overrated, obviously, but 13% of voters Nick Saban, Lane Kiffin, and Lovey Smith each got 9%. And 48% of the voters chose not to answer. <laughs> okay, let's just break this down real quick. Lane Kiffin, I'll give you. Lovey Smith, didn't he go to a Super Bowl? He did. Yeah, he didn't win. It's the first but, black. Um, it was the first it was Super Bowl, no matter who won, a black coach was winning. Him exactly. And, him and Dungey. But, yeah, Nick Saban. Uh, Overrated? Your poll is garbage. <laughs> Yeah, that's called that's called animosity because that's they get stomped, butthurt. Yeah, they get stomped by fucking Alabama. That's what that is. How the fuck you think Nick Saban's overrated? Where's I the, have no fucking idea. Where's the secret poll done? Alabama and Michigan. <laughs> this poll was done 
in uh, <laughs> on Ohio State's campus oh, yeah, and, and in the rest of the S in and, and the Michigan State's campus and the rest of the ACC or <laughs> SEC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, Lane Kiffin, yeah, I think I definitely think he's overrated. I don't know why, but here's the thing. I don't rate Lane Kiffin all that high. I mean, who do, I, outside of his father being the fucking the mastermind of that Tampa 2 defense with Dungy, what the fuck? That's what, it seems like that's what Lane Kiffin is known for is being related to Monty Kiffin's dad. son. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't see it. I don't see where he's like some highly rated football coach. I, I don't know. I mean, it's anonymous, so whatever. But I, it would it, still. I'd, I'd I'd like to see the schools that participated. <laughs> no. You don't have to tell me how they. You don't have to tell me how they voted. I just want to know what schools participated. Yeah. But uh, hundred yeah, percent. I mean, the head coaches of Auburn think Nick Saban is overrated. <laughs> they did what uh, they did what they did back in the day when they got Mike Heath. When the Tigers fans got Mike Heath at the All Star game, they grabbed all the ballots and they, and you had to punch out who you wanted for catcher. And they lined them up, and they took one of those big fucking long pieces of metal, and they had like three three hundred of them stacked up, and just shoved it down to where it punched out three hundred <laughs> ballots for Mike Heath all at once. And it was like, hey, Mike Heath's in the All Star game. <laughs> uh, Pre internet days, when you literally stuffed the ballot box. Yes. Yeah. But um, I mean, yeah, I've, I've talked about it on the off season. I talked about it last season. Uh, I mean, I, I'm kind of – if he goes in there and he loses to Florida, Michigan State, or Penn State, Wisconsin, and Ohio State, if he ends up with four losses on the season, I'm thinking you got to look at him and go, okay, that was your third season. You got one more season to right this ship. And, I mean, you better fucking – better drive it all the way home. You better go 12-0. and 0. Exactly. I'm talking I want to see you shaking hands with Nick Saban in the championship game type shit. Talk about good game, Nick. Now give me my trophy. So I, I, cause at that point, what the fuck? What what have you done? I mean, he didn't come here saying I'm here to return Michigan back to winning the Big Ten and going and losing in the Rose Bowl. I mean, he he didn't say that. He said we're here to win national championships. Okay, you set the bar yourself, big boy. It's time to fucking pay the piper, get off the fucking pot. Do it. Do it. Get it Do done. It. Get it done. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Which I mean, I have to say, if they if he does get four losses this year, and then he shits the bed t- next season, I'm never going to hear the end of it from you, Sparty fans. Because who the fuck is Michigan going to get then? Well, did my dad say this first question comes to my mind? Who do you bring in if that happens? I, I I mean, at that point, are you doing? And I hate to speak ill of the man. He was he's a Michigan legend. Okay. But I mean, at that point, are you? Are, is he Bo Schembechler part two? Win the Big Ten and go lose the Rose Bowl to USC, and and we're happy every year. I mean, he did, Bo Schembechler never won a national championship with with U of M. I mean, there were seasons, there were seasons with him as the head coach where they considered the season a win because they beat Ohio State, but they still didn't win the Big Ten. I think those days are gone. Yeah. The, the landscape of college football has changed. It's not just your division and your rivals, it is national championship. Because you got to remember, for almost 100 years, a national championship was decided by a coach's poll and the AP poll. It was not decided on the field. Well, now in college football, in the landscape of college football, it is decided on the field. So now it's put up or, it's, it's put up or shut up time now. So it, it unfortunate for, I guess, Harbaugh if he wants to come in and be Bo Schembechler part two. Or Bo Schembechler for a new generation, because I don't think those type of coaches really have a place in college football anymore. You know, guys that can get you, you know, ten and two, nine and three, and a respectable bowl game every year, and you're happy with that for you know, fifteen, twenty years. That's a failure. I mean, especially with the damage has been done between Rich Rod and Brady Hoke, the damage that was done to Michigan's reputation. Oh. And, and Michigan is as a football destination for high school students. I mean, it was bad. Oh, how I mean, for, how pissed was Gary Muller got to be? Or not Gary Muller. Oh, what the fuck? Lloyd. Lloyd Carr? Yeah. Oh, Lloyd Carr's got to be like, I did all this shit to build it up. And you just won a national championship. 
Yeah. And you shit on us. Yeah. You, you, just, know? you crashed the plane into the mountain. Thanks, asshole. <laughs> All you had to do was maintain the course. Well, you know, that's something that, because, you know, we weren't on the air when, when Harbaugh got hired, but that, that was something that I talked about with a lot of college football fans that I know. I said he's, he's kind of setting himself up for a no-win situation because Harbaugh won. If he comes back and he and within four seasons he turns Michigan around to where they're a dominant program who are in the hunt every year for the national championship, then the expectation is he better do that the rest of his time with Michigan. That he better be like the, a Nick Saban type coach. If he comes back and he doesn't do it and he's out after four years, where does he go at that point? Because isn't the the the, the magic you're hoping to get from Jim Harbaugh pretty much gone if that's the case. Coach for your 2020 Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, either that or 2020 Detroit Lions. Ooh, uh, that'd be a homer hire. That'd be a homer hire like a motherfucker. Well, I, I just, and I mean, I, there's still the fact that he tends to burn out his welcome wherever he goes. And just because for two seasons we haven't heard horror stories getting leaked to the press doesn't mean that he hasn't rubbed people the wrong way. As long as he's trending upward and he continues to, a lot of people will bite their tongue. If he has a slip and he, he, he backslides this season, I'm almost guaranteeing, I'm almost guaranteeing, if they lose to Florida, Michigan State, and Penn State, after that loss to Penn State, we're going to start hearing people bitching about Harbaugh from inside the program that aren't happy with him at head coach. I guarantee it. I mean, shit, even if they lose just to Florida and State, that might start happening. And that's only, what, halfway, not even halfway through the season? I think if he loses more than two games this year, you'll hear that kind of talk. Well, um, I mean, it's nice when you can fucking run roughshod over teams like Rutgers and Purdue and Air Force. Cincinnati. But I'm, yeah, I mean. This ain't basketball, motherfucker. You'll win. It, it, exactly. I mean, you, 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 you got to win the games that you're not supposed to win. You want that respect? You want to be part of, you know, Michigan lore? Your name to be said with, like, you know, reverence long after you're dead? You, you better fucking. You better, better, make, better do it. Penn State, Wisconsin. And Ohio State look like you're bitches. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> Pretty that's what you got to do that, 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 that schedule this year. I mean, those are probably the three teams. You want to make a statement? You beat those three teams and you beat them handily. Well, I'll take, I, I'll take a fucking last second victory over Ohio State. I'll take a victory over Ohio State, period. Is what it, it, it's gotten that bad. It's, 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 it, dude, it's so bad that when I'm playing like, online and i run into an ohio state fan they don't even talk shit anymore to me once they find out i'm a michigan fan they just go you know i don't even have to say anything you know (laughs) i mean and that's even worse in a way (laughs) it's like i'd rather you talk some shit but just to be like yeah please talk more shit yeah, I don't have to waste my breath. You, I, you know? could argue Michigan is what? Let's see here. They're ten games up. You know, overall. Uh, oh, and the overall record with Ohio State. They're 58, 58 or fifty to forty eight and six. Yeah, but as a Sparty, you guys don't like to look at those overall records. You just like to look look at the last six years. I'm not one of those Sparty. <laughs> I'm well aware the program existed before the two thousands. <laughs> or I should say, before D'Antonio. Yeah, when, Dan T- when, when, when D'Antonio started his little winning run against Michigan, and all I would hear about is, oh, who's won the last X amount of years? I'd go, overall record. And they go, stop bringing up ancient history. And I'd whip out my Bill Hicks line. Well, since we're talking fucking shelf life, don't bring up Jesus to me. You know, I mean, fucking, if, if we're going to ignore the overall history here. Since the year 2000, Michigan has only beat Ohio State three times. Yes. That is 16 years. That is ridiculous. And if you want to just go the even 20 years, five times in the last 20 years. So one out of every... Five games. One out of every five games, Michigan steals one. Yeah. That's not the Michigan I grew up loving. 
Hey, hey. Something Michigan. Something Michigan I was raised on. According to the stats, uh, Michigan should win this year. According to what we just said. <laughs> Last time we won uh, was uh, 2011 in Ann Arbor. Yeah, well, let's put it this way. I will not be holding my breath on Saturday, November 25th, come 12 o'clock, for a Michigan victory. In fact, I might actually have to fall off the wagon come halftime, depending <laughs> on how bad that game is. <laughs> oh, does it count that, uh, the, that the win in 2010 was vacated? No, probably not. <laughs> no, not my book. With the vest. Did, that guy just va- that guy just vaporized, huh? After that, is Trestle showed up anywhere after that? Is that uh, it for him? Captain, I I have no idea. I, I I when Captain Sweater Vest went bye bye, I was like, all right. And then Uncle Urban showed up, and I was like, God damn it, <sighs> we get rid of one asshole for another. Like oh. I knew they weren't going to hire a fucking. They, I knew they weren't going to pull the Detroit Tigers and hire a coach with no experience. Mm-hmm. Or a you know a manager like they did with uh, Awesomeness, but I mean I was like really really Uncle Urban honestly that guy's been slugging it out in Florida for how many years? And if you know anything about college football in Florida, you know that it I mean it, before he got there it went the U FSU and the Gators. Was it that was the pecking order. Urban Meyer, the guy that quote unquote retired for a couple of seasons and then came back, or was that Lane Kiffin? Was no, it Lane was uh, like, oh, it's health reasons, it's crazy, and wasn't yeah, it that just was to cover for a suspension or something that he should have served? That was Urban Meyer supposedly he retired over uh, heart issues. Yeah. Hey, Jim Tressel is currently the uh, president of Youngstown State University in Youngstown, Ohio. Ooh, ouch. Well, that is his hometown, so. Yeah, well, yeah, but uh, you know, you, bro, you were the coach of Ohio State. You're putting the wood to Michigan every year. Oh, well, nice. At least he still got a job, right? Well, I'm not going to cry for him, so I mean, yeah. yeah. boo hoo, motherfucker. Enjoy Youngstown State. The fuck you want me to say? I don't. People also search for Maurice Claret. That yeah, guy. exactly. <laughs> that, they had that whole thirty for thirty about those two. Mm-hmm. Youngstown boys. Whoops. That 30 for 30 actually made me feel bad for Murray's Claret. And I'm like, God damn it. I don't want to feel bad for anybody that ever wore that shitty uniform. He's supposedly the greatest. He was the greatest football coach at Ohio State since Woody Hayes. He had an 828 win percentage. I, dude, it's kind of hard to argue that. It really is. And I mean... Here's another fact that Ohio State fans love to rub in Michigan fans' face. We got our fucking, you know, Messiah of a head coach. I'm not talking about Harbaugh. I'm talking about Bo. We got him from the coaching tree of Woody Hayes coming out of mm-hmm. Ohio State. They love to point that out, that you had to come get one of ours. And how many times have you guys had to recruit Ohio players to go play for the team up north because you couldn't recruit you know, the recruiting pipeline was so weak into your own fucking state. And I'm just like, ugh. It's one of those things, like, I, I'd like to disagree with you, but I have a problem saying facts are bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, no, it's like, fuck. Oh. oh. All right. Well, I, I think this is, should we leave it at that? And this is the all football show? Yeah. If you, if you came to hear about basketball, baseball, hockey, Sorry, not this week. Baseball, what too? I mean, baseball, we're we're what we we're 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 starting to ramp it up here. We got what a month and a half left. I mean, it's this. Have the standings really moved at all since the All Star break? It's pretty much. It's gonna be what? No. It's gonna be Boston, Cleveland, uh, Astros, yeah, Houston, and then uh, Dodgers, Nationals, and Cubs. I mean, it's pretty much where the standings are at. So, I mean, I will say this. I did see an article the other day online. I cannot remember what. had to be either ESPN or uh, Sports Illustrated, but it was an opinion piece on why you should root for a Nationals-Astros World Series. And I was like, you know what? Thank God I'm not the only one that feels that way. Be good baseball, man. I mean, at this point, at this point, I think it's hard to argue if it was a Dodgers-Astros World Series. I mean, that's just the two best teams playing each other. Who doesn't want to see that? 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, unless you, unless you know, your team happens to be in the division <laughs> with either of the teams that are in the World Series. Yeah. And then basketball, nothing's really popping. Hockey, I mean, what there was one hockey story and thing that Kansas City could get an NF or an NHL team one day, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's okay. Let's keep expanding into areas that don't give a fuck about hockey. Yeah. And I don't care what Iceman says about what minor league team that they got down there. Yeah, I, you want a team? You want to put a team in an area where people are going to come when that team is an expansion team and they suck. And we've already established. You put a team in Canada. You put a team somewhere in New England. It's going to happen like that. You put a team in the middle of the fucking country. Not so much. Wisconsin but, has zero hockey teams. Exactly. Wisconsin. Yep. There's another one. Shit, I'd even say North or South Dakota. Tell me, you tell me you can put a hockey team in Green Bay. I tell you, you're fucking lying. I know they love their football up there, but I mean, it's, I mean, that's right where fucking the mouth of Lake Superior is right there, man. Like that. God damn it, NHL. Anyways, it was all football episode. Hey, still some spots left in the fantasy league. We got a few left. You got to go to the. We, well, we, we, it, we actually expanded it. Yeah. 10 to 12. Yeah, we had to, oh, it, it's, yeah, after last weekend. It was going to be 10-team league, but, yeah. So we had a few spots left. Uh, hit us up on our social media. Uh, we're posting the links uh, at Sporgy Podcast on Twitter. Uh, look us up, Sporgy, on the Facebook. Uh, and because we have enough Facebook likes, Sporgy Podcast on Facebook, if you search that, it'll actually pop up now. Yeah. They actually published the page because enough people liked it. Yeah, it, it, it's funny. I find with, with at least for us, it, Twitter seems to be the the spot where we find more audience. People on it's because Facebook's old people. I don't know. But we're there. You can email the show sporgy at christophermedia.net. And yeah, that's it. Ice Man will be back next week. Uh, hopefully, we'll uh, our, our studio. Decided to revolt against us this week, but hopefully we'll have everything back online, back to normal next week. So thanks for listening. And we'll see you then. All right, later, guys. If you like this show, please tell a friend. Please follow us on Twitter and like and share us on Facebook by searching for Christopher Media. You can subscribe to all ChristopherMedia.net shows for free on ChristopherMedia.net. Please make sure to rate and comment on all your favorite Christopher Media shows. Thank you in advance for supporting Christopher Media by clicking on the PayPal button and by clicking through to all the sponsors who support ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. And thank you for listening. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Hey, we get it. You don't want to be hearing a progressive commercial right now, so let us tell you something you do want to hear. No one is funnier than you. People laugh just thinking about the things you've said. <laughs> I'm laughing at one of them right now. Coworkers repeat your jokes at the office, but they're never as good as when you tell them and shame on them for trying. There. Don't you feel better? You'll also feel better knowing you could save when you bundle home and auto with Progressive. <laughs> Although I'm sure you'd have a funnier way to say that. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Bundle discount not available in all states or situations. It's a new year. And with T-Mobile, it's not about how far apart we are. It's about how close we can be. So we're bringing out our best deal. Right now, get the iPhone 12 on us on every single plan with eligible iPhone trade-in. So I can FaceTime with my sister in Savannah. That's right. The iPhone 12 on us on every plan. All on America's 5G leader in coverage. T-Mobile. With 24 monthly bill credits and a new line plus tax. If you cancel credit, stop and balance on required finance agreement may be due. Contact us for well-qualified buyers. Qualifying consumer plan required. See coverage and offer details at T-Mobile.com.